What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to look at list boxes with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at list boxes, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, in this video, we're gonna do list boxes, but before we get started again, check out this gash I got on my head. Yesterday, I was out in my yard. I turned, walked right into a tree branch. Didn't hurt or anything, but man, it looks ugly, doesn't it? So I'm gonna have a gash on my head for the next week or so. Sorry about that if it looks gross, but you know, who really cares? So list boxes. So we've been doing projects with Kinter for a while. We did the flashcard app for a couple of weeks. I figured we'd get back to basics and learn some just you know basic functionality of Kinter that we haven't looked at yet. So this is a list box, pretty simple, but you can do a lot of different things with this. And in fact, we're probably gonna need a couple of videos to go over all of the functions in this and all of the, the different things you can do with it. But in this video, I'll sort of introduce it to you and show you how to use the basic functionality of it. So let's go ahead and close this and let's head over to our code. And I've created a new file called listbox.py. And we just got the basic starter code that we always use, 400 by 400, we've got an icon, we put a title in there, no big deal. So to create a list box, it's pretty simple. You just sort of define it like always. And a list box is just a widget type of widget with Kinter. And we know all about widgets. They all have the same format. So let's create a list box. Let's just call it my list box and set that equal to a list box. And we're, where do we want to put this? We want to put it in root. And that's really all we need to do right now in order to sort of define this thing. So let's just pack this on the screen real quick. Uh, let's give this a dot pack. And I'll give it a pad Y of 15 just to smush it down the screen a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this and head back over here and run Python listbox.py. And when we do, we see we get this box. It's just a box. Now I notice there's no scroll bar and it doesn't have one by default. So if your list is particularly long and you want to scroll, you have to add a scroll bar. That's sort of a more advanced feature. We'll talk about that probably in the next video. But uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. There's your list box. Now, in order to put things in, you could do it a couple of different ways. You can just do it manually, or you could create a list and loop through the list and put each of those things in there one at a time. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at both of those things. So let's uh, add item to list box. And to do this, it's just very, very easy. We just my list box dot insert. And insert does just what it sounds like. It inserts, and there's two parameters inside this function there is an index and a string. So the index is the index number, the, the item in our list box, which position do we want to put it in? And the first one is zero. You can also use uh, end if you want to do the last one. We'll put in, this will be the last one. And then you, you put a string, you know, whatever you actually want to put in here. This is an item, right? And that's really all there is to it. If we save this and come back here and run this again, we see this is an item has been added to our list, list box. And if we want more than one thing, we can just sort of copy this and add it again. Uh, let's just call this one second item. And notice we're putting in for each one. So the first time this gets run, you know, Python starts at the top of the file and it goes down and it executes one line at a time. So it's executing each of these lines. It comes to this line and it executes it. It says put it on the end. So it puts it as the last one in our list box. And then it drops down and does this one. And this one says put it on the end, so it will put it on the end. So it'll just keep putting them below the last one, right? Which is probably what you want. So let's save that, run it. And we see this is an item, and there's our second item. If you wanted to do the opposite, if you want to put the second item first, then you could just designate that here with zero, right? So if we save this and run it, now second item is the one that's listed first, right? So that's pretty cool, it's pretty easy and uh, pretty simple. Now let's add a list of items. This is probably more like what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna just create my list and this is just gonna be a Python list and we can put anything we want in here. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, and that's fine. Now we can just loop through the list and put each item in there. So let's go for uh, item in 
my underscore list colon and then we just do the same thing we did here so i can just copy this and instead of putting the string we would put uh, item whatever we call this variable right here in our little for loop right and instead of putting this first we want to put this probably at the end so let's save this and run it and you see second item this is an item and then one two three All right so let's change this order of this let's put let's put each of these on the end so it looks a little better now notice end i'm using this is a a special keyword in kinter end we've seen this before sometimes this works sometimes you need to go in quotation marks end like that i don't know if it's a mac thing versus a linux thing versus a windows thing i don't know if it's you know if you're on this version of python or that version of python you have to use quotation marks but sometimes i've seen uh you end won't work in all capitals you need to put it in quotation marks like that and if we do that if, and save this and run it you'll notice that nothing has really changed this is an item second item one two three each of these one two and threes are being looped and put on the end even though we wrapped it in quotation marks that time so okay that's cool now we can also you know change this around if we want to put uh we want to put those items first so now it will be three two one will be the first ones listed right so if we save this and run it we see three two one and then this is an item this is a second item so okay that's cool <laughs> right so pretty simple to add things to our list box and again we're using zero for the first thing you know if you wanted to put something as the second thing or the fifth thing you know uh, whatever and i'm going to change this back to end you can do that so you know if later on we wanted to add something let's say a new thing let's grab this and down here let's create a new thing and we wanted to put it in a specific spot for instance the third position or the second position now remember this is sort of like a python list the index numbers start at zero so zero one two this will put it as the third thing so if we save this and run it we see a new thing is now the third thing zero one two the second item is the third place right because they start at zero uh, so you can do that so pretty cool pretty easy so now how do we do stuff with these how do we like select an item and do something with it you know if we click on it let's see let's run this again real quick if we click on one of these items you know they kind of highlight but you know now what right so let's create a button real quick and i'm just going to call it my button and that's going to be a button and it's going to be in root and the text will be let's uh, delete right and then the command will be delete so first let's my button dot pack this let's give this a pad y of 10 just to smush it down a little bit now we need to create this delete function so i'm just going to right here go define delete and what do we want to do here well to delete something we call the dot delete function so in our case it would be my underscore list box dot delete now this is a function and now we need to tell it what we want to delete so when something is highlighted in your list box when you've clicked on it that becomes the anchor right so we want to delete the anchor right and that should work so now let's save this and run it and so we have this is an item second item one two three say we want to get rid of two we can highlight it and boom it disappears just like that so select second item boom and we can come through here and delete each of these if we want so that's cool so that's how you delete them what about getting them to do something like if you want to you want to select it and then do something else with it well let's create a second button let's go my well, let's just copy all of this and let's call this my button two because we're lazy and uh, let's say select and instead of a command of delete we want to give this select and now we need to create that function so let's just right here de define select and now let's create a label down here let's call this my underscore label and that's a label and it's in root and the text equals nothing right now and then let's let my label dot pack this and give this a pad y of five or something to smush it down a little bit so we've got a label we've packed it on the screen but there's nothing there now we want to 
put whatever we've selected from the box in that label. So in our select function, we can call my underscore label dot config and then set that text equal to something. What do we want to set? Well, we want to grab whatever's in our list box. So let's call my list box and we want to get it. We're familiar with dot get, right? Well, we have to now also designate what from the list box we want to get. We want to get whatever's been selected and we already know that that is the anchor. So we can just get the anchor and that should work. We may need to global my label. So let's just do that just in case. <laughs> All right, so let's run this thing. So we can say second item, select, boom, second item appears. We can grab two, select, boom, now it's two. This is an item, select, boom. Uh, if we wanna now delete that, boom, it deletes there. It doesn't delete here, we can change that just for fun. Really doesn't have anything to do with our select button, but up here we can go, we just copy this whole thing and in our delete function, we can just set that text then equal to nothing again. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's save that, run it. So if we select the second item, boom, if we then delete it, boom, it disappears from there and it disappears from down there. And that's kind of fun. This is an item, boom, gone from there, gone from there. And that's all there is to it. So list box, pretty easy. Now I just blew through some of the basics for list boxes. There's a lot of other things you can do. You can add a scroll bar. We'll need to look at that. Uh, you can uh, set it up to where you can select more than one item, right? Because you might often want to select more than one item. Um, and so we'll have to look at that. Now, this video is getting a little bit long, so I think we'll stop right there. Plus, I got a cut on my head, right? <laughs> I don't know. You know why I got that cut on my head? Because not enough of you smashed the like button. That's right. That's what happens when not enough of you smash the like button. You got to stare at my horribly disfigured, scratched head. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.